Enjoy your meeting. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this webinar for businessadvising.org. We have a very special uh, webinar today. Uh, right now, it's Small Business Week here in San Francisco, and we have presenting today Sherry Bijan, who is the 2015 Business Advisor of the Year for businessadvising.org. So it's a great uh, day for small businesses here in San Francisco and around the world, and we're very fortunate to have uh, Sherry Bijan joined us today. Uh, before I pass things over to Sherry to lead us uh, in the content portion of today, uh, just a couple of things. I want to thank everyone for joining us and for reaching out to businessadvising.org for support with your small business. Uh, we are recording today, just so you're aware. Uh, and I have everyone muted for now. Uh, that way we just don't hear typing and you know, buses in the background and things like that. If you ever have a question, in the bottom left-hand corner, there's a little chat window, and you can type in a question there. Uh, Sherry's going to do a presentation. At the end, we're going to have some Q&A. So as things go, type in a question. Uh, she'll cover those at the end of the presentation, or while she's answering other people's questions, feel free to just type in yours, and, and I'll read them to Sherry, and uh, we'll get, make sure your questions get answered. A little bit about us, businessadvising.org is a nonprofit small business accelerator that matches small business owners with talented volunteer business advisors based on whatever pain points the small business owner has. So if you need marketing help, finance help, uh, we have folks uh, to help you support your business, help you grow. We also have a, a loan program where we give uh, $50,000 to $200,000 in loans to small businesses, uh, and these are often people that have been turned down by banks. So we can loan when traditional lenders often can't. Uh, and with that, uh, I'd like to introduce Sherry Bijan. Uh, as I said, Sherry is the 2015 uh, Business Advisor of the Year for businessadvising.org. She's spent a lot of time working with our small businesses. Uh, she's been working with our partner, NerdWallet, uh, on a pilot program between our two organizations and has really been a star uh, in that pilot program. She's a seasoned veteran of the securities industry in the practice of investment and advisement management. Uh, she offers years of experience and devotion coaching investors in the capital markets as a registered investment advisor. Uh, and in conjunction with her work in the advisor, in 1994, she helped launch a family restaurant in Palo Alto uh, that had a successful 10-year run. So she's quite familiar with running a small business. As a small business advocate, she served as the president and director of the City of Palo Alto Business and Professional Association, and she volunteers with Business Advising uh, and NerdWallet, as I mentioned, and she also serves on the board of Community Grows, a San Francisco nonprofit dedicated to youth. Uh, and with that, Sherry, I'm going to load your presentation and turn the uh, content portion over to you. Um, everyone, if you bear with me while this loads, sometimes, oh, there we go, that's pretty easy. So, Sherry, I'm going to pass the baton over to you, and uh, I'll let you lead us. Great. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for taking time out of your day to join us, and I hope that uh, we can have a candid conversation um, and uh, see if I can um, you know, give you some objectives to, to apply to your businesses. So, with that, uh, we're going to dive right in. Uh, so, Jerry, can I get you to take control so that uh, people can uh, Oh, yes, see of course. You? Yes, sorry about that. There, there we, we go. go. All righty. So, um, in any case, um, I was asked to, to address the issue of financing, obviously, running a small business, which is always a challenge and one of the many challenges of running a small business. And to that end, um, I... Um, we will do it the conventional way of running through the deck that we have prepared, but um, I really want to be um, a little more, um, I guess, organic with my delivery and realistic. Uh, so uh, the options that you have with funding are very clear. You can either do debt or equity financing. Um, what we're going to cover is what those options are specifically. Then we're going to discuss how you can create um, your investor pitch deck. And 
ultimately, what is it that these funders are looking for when they are considering your particular business? So in terms of funding, equity investors, essentially what it means is you are selling shares in your company for a predetermined fixed price on a set valuation. What that means is you are estimating that your company is worth X amount of dollars and you're willing to forfeit to this funder a percentage in that company at a set value. That all, I mean, it's great on paper, but it has to make sense. Obviously, you can't just arbitrarily set valuation on your company. Um, and, and so we'll get into that later in, in our discussions about um, what, how important your financials are and, and the delivery of those financials and staying true to the numbers. The other option is um, debt, equity, uh, debt notes, which... Um, essentially means it's, it's often perceived as the easier way to obtain funding um, and because the, the, the due diligence is uh, far simpler than doing equity financing. Um, and these shares are, can be converted. So if you're a startup, let's say, and you are um, writing debt financing, you're borrowing money and paying a um, an interest rate. It's no different really than going to your bank and getting a home loan, if you will, or a line of credit. Um, so you take down debt and you pay um, a set amount on that debt in interest. Um, and then you have the option to have that debt adjust down the road to, um, to equity, depending on how well things go for you. And it's less costly, less documentation, less legal paperwork. Um, so it seems to be the more attractive way to do it. So now what do you do when you're, when you're preparing to do your presentation? This is probably the key point before you even set out to seek funding is do your homework. What does that mean? That means that know what it is that you want. Often we, we see entrepreneurs coming in um, and, and seeking guidance in terms of where do you think I should go or how do you think I should tweak it. And that's just the, the nature of business. It evolves as it progresses, so that's to be expected. But from your vantage point, you need to come in knowing full well at that moment in time what it is you want. And come in with an understanding of how much funding you need. In other words, how much money will it take to launch or um, develop or whatever state your business is in. Have a comprehension of what it is you're, you're needing. This next section is going to be the most important part of this seeking out of funders, and that is, you know, you can talk to a buddy who's running a small business also, but it really is completely different than yours. And, you know, they can recommend an investor they've worked with that successfully. But if that investor is not familiar with your business or has actually done funding in your business and understands all the nuances that come with your business, that may not be the right fit for you. And the other important element is you need to see that this funder isn't just some guy that came into money and, you know, wants to plunk it down somewhere. You want to know that they are learned, they have had success funding um, and supporting a small business. And this is where that smart money on the deck that I refer to, smart money is investors that have done this before. And they not only will bring you funding, they will also add value in other benefits. They will support you through this process on an ongoing basis. Moving right along, everybody talks about preparing your pitch deck. The pitch deck is essentially only a supporting element of who you are, what your business is, 
and your presentation. You're not going to ever want to sit before a funder or a potential investor with your pitch deck first and foremost. You should have it obviously prepared, but what that investor is most interested in is your person, is you and your team, and what is it you're doing. And so you come in, don't, you know, and, and, and all costs, unless it's requested, do not provide your pitch deck in advance. Don't email it in and say, hey, you know, will you look this over? You know, because that's not only a supporting element, it's also your golden egg, right? Because if you perfect your pitch deck, um, you don't want to reveal too much. So you want to essentially, on the onset, develop um, a relationship. In preparing that pitch deck, so I'm going to refer to the slide now quickly, um, stand in front of the mirror and present to yourself 101 times. Do these trial runs over and over and over. Before you even set out to do that pitch deck, understand what it is you're going out to get. What are your goals? What are you hoping will be the outcome of your meeting with this funder? Be prepared to ask questions. That's always really very important because funders appreciate you coming in not knowing it all um, and anticipating things to to develop um, not as you had planned. So they really appreciate some uh, a, a humble stance, if you will. So don't be afraid to ask questions. Be prepared to be questioned because that's a given. And don't be intimidated if you don't know answers. It's okay. Going back to my previous slide of doing your homework, know who you're meeting with. In other words, identify who can actually provide mutual success for you before you actually call for a meeting. And the rest is pretty self-explanatory. Know your metrics. Know what you can actually achieve that's deliverable. Um, show numbers. Your financials are very important. They're interested in that. They want to see you know, what kind of cash flow you're having right now, what revenues you've generated year over year. Know who your competition is. Know who your customers are and your end users. And then have, have a wish date. You know, if you're not already in operation, when do you hope to launch by? And again, what I touched on is the, the one singular thing an investor cares about is you. They don't care about anything else. So when you get into that meeting, develop a, a rapport and camaraderie, find some common ground that you can touch on completely unrelated to what you've really come in to, to ask for. And once you start to go into your story, you have to be compelling. What, what I mean by that is you've got to believe so much in your own product that your passion and your vision comes through. And and essentially, you know, how you sit around, shoot the breeze with your buddies and say, you know, I'm thinking of doing X, Y, Z. And look for reaction out of your friends. If they say, oh, my God, that's incredible. Why did I think to do that? Or I'm totally on board with that, and I can't wait for you to evolve and what happens. Those are the kinds of cues you want. You want to bring out a product that either hasn't been done or if it's being done, you can do it better. So what is it your problem what is it that your business will address? What is the problem that you're seeking out to address? What is the solutions you're offering? Where do you see those market opportunities and what is your strategy in actually implementing? And the biggest piece of it, who is the team? Besides yourself, do you have a team that will support you going forward? So now getting to the pitch, we've talked all about that. Um, you're going to want to 
um, obviously, and we'll get into the details of what the pitch should entail. Um, you have to engage the audience, meaning you have to be compelling, you have to be interesting. Either don't lose them. Keep them interested, but then be specific. Be very specific about what it is you want, what dollars, what the business plan is, what your envision, your, your projections, all of that. What your pitch deck should include is the, the first thing is your team. You provide an executive summary. You provide background, a description. And is your team on board and are they delivering on all cylinders? Then you define the problem. Mr. Investor, this is the problem I foresee in this space and we have ID'd it. And this is our solution. This is how, this is the products we're going to provide, the services we're going to provide, what is it you're proposing? You have to be very specific about that. Then you have to identify the market you're going after. What are the opportunities? What is your strategy? Where's the traction? And when able, during this pitch, do a demo. Show me. Basically, show me how your product's going to work. Okay? If you are a pie baker, bring me the pie to taste. If you are um, a writer or if you're, you know, whatever. Just, if you're able to bring a prototype, bring, bring a, uh, a mock-up, bring a demo to demonstrate to them what this product will ultimately look like. Because while it may be very clear to you, as a layman investor out there who sees pitches day in and day out, they may not completely grasp what it is you're, you're looking to offer. Then um, your financials. Again, we touched on that before, and I want to reiterate, very important. You've got you've to be able to substantiate your revenue and cash flow stream and projections. Then you want to talk about you know, once you've identified your market, how do you plan to distribute? What are those channels? What are your sources? What makes sense? Um, and then in doing all of this, frankly, who's your competition? How do you know it's not already being done better than you in half the time? So know who the competition is, how they're doing it, complete analysis of that. And what is your lead time over that competition? Are you ahead of the game? Are you behind the ball? So all of that you have to have a clear understanding of. And um, think about and discuss the risks involved with what you're trying to do, whether it's the product, whether it's operational, whether it's management, whether it's legal. What, is, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is the market risk. Are the people that you're actually offering this product to, are they going to buy it? Um, the product risk, is it going to work? Operational risk, you know, are you going to be able to have, uh, meet production and um, do the deliverables? Uh, manufacturing, production, all of that. Then you have the management risk. You know, you start out with a great team, and are they able to, A, deliver? Are they going to stay on? Are they going to see it through? Those are all risks. And then the legal risks. Legal is very, very important, particularly when you're doing business with other people's money. You want to make sure you're protected, your patents are protected, your trademarks are protected, um, your, any intellectual properties you may be bring into the game are protected. So... That's essentially your pitch, and you're, I guarantee you're going to be, you're going to be asked to substantiate. So before you even get to pitch, before you even get to walk in and meet with potential investors, you've got to, 
you have to develop a network. And by networking, I don't mean the conventional networking. I mean, first of all, work circles that you know within yourself and the realm of your business that you have relationships in that you can capitalize on. And every chance you get, you pitch and promote yourself and your product and what you're thinking. And the best place to start is your own ecosystem. If this is like a new venture for you and you have work history um, and it's related or even unrelated, you clearly have established an ecosystem. If you're fresh out of college, you've established an ecosystem. If you, um, if you are um, in, in, um, in a community space where you're volunteering and, um, and giving back, those are all part of your ecosystem. Then the other thing that is important is expanding on social media. And, of course, not, not the usual, yeah, be on Facebook and have a Facebook page or Instagram or Twitter yourself. Not so much those things, but rather the, the, the more customary things that we don't really think about. Like, for instance, Google has just launched um, this program that they call Let's Put Our Cities on the Map. And research that and see how you can get on the forefront of, of being able to be Googled. Um, and, um, and so they have two programs. One is um, uh, putting our cities on the map, and the other one is Google My Business. So these are some areas that you could potentially um, tap into social media and, um, and um, um, expand upon. Looks like I, I'm sorry, I'm going to just stop my, it looks like I dropped off. Am I still on, Ellie? Yeah, hi, Sherry. Yeah, you're still on. Maybe uh, turn your webcam back on. It might have uh, yeah, turned off. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering what happened We can it. hear you. Okay, good. Um, all right. I'm not able to do that, but I'll try to, here we go. Okay. So um, with that said, uh, where was it? Oh, so the social media. So Google is one of them. PayPal is another one. PayPal actually offers a lot of basic needs, such as processing and receiving payments and tracking your sales and managing your inventory, um, all kinds of tools that really um, behooves you to explore. Uh, and then, lastly, Facebook actually has come up with um, a creative page where they will, you know, do these mock-up pages that you can then customize with your own logo and your own photographs and what have you. So these are really some tools that you can utilize um, to build presence and awareness uh, without, um, obviously, greater effort or expense. Now, depending on your product, accelerator programs are a great means of networking and being able to pitch your product and, and create that awareness. Um, and then the other one is co-working spaces. So if you don't already have an established space that you're working out of, if it's your bedroom at home, you can join co-working spaces that are very collaborative um, and um, – and network that way. Okay. So you've, you are, you've managed to get into see an investor. Um, have, you've done your pitch, and you've been rejected, which, believe it or not, happens more often than not. So don't be discouraged. Don't ever be discouraged, because for every 10 pitches, Maybe they'll accept one, maybe none. So you have to be diligent, remain steadfast and true to yourself and your goal, accept those challenges, don't get angry and upset, be polite, always be thankful, always appreciate the fact that you actually 
were able to meet with them um, and then ask for a second meeting. Always ask for that second meeting. Now, whether you grant it or not, just keep at it. Try to stay in the forefront. In other words, it, it, don't be annoying by, you know, emailing and and forwarding attachments and this and that, but be present and be aware and 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 develop the relationship. In a way, I'm I'm gonna go on record and say it. You know, you almost by doing that, you um, you not you don't shame the investor, but you keep them alert and aware. And often, your persistence and your dedication to the cause. Um, will be the reason well, where you may receive funding. And so, and you drive the timing. In other words, if you're really strapped for, for funding, you don't stop there because you got one rejection. You move on and you stay true to your cause and your timing and go from there. So I think that is the end of um, the, um, the presentation, um, Ellie, and um, I'm happy to to field questions at this point. Ellie? Fantastic. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, okay, Thank good. you for that. Um, no just turning my webcam back on. Yeah. And uh, you might need to do the same because it looks like yours turned off. Um, okay, so we have some questions. And, and so, folks, uh, in the bottom left-hand corner, you see a chat window. Uh, type in your questions, and I'll read them to Sherry. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully we'll get them answered. And I see... Um, one come in already about, you know, you're talking about presentations. This person asked, you know, does my, I'm an inexperienced uh, public speaker. Does my rough public speaking presentation skills hurt me? Okay, I, I'm trying to see if I heard the whole question. The, the pub, oh, public speaking presentation? Yeah, so it's, this person says that, that their public speaking skills are a little rough. Um, uh -huh. Does that hurt them uh, when they're doing the presentation? And I think what you're saying is, you know, will the investors see through my rough public speaking skills to uh, what's really important, my, my numbers and my ideas and my strategy, uh, or does, does that detract from, from my presentation? No, I, I absolutely don't think that that will hurt you. Because, again, you have to, while I did – really emphasize, and I will reemphasize, that the investor has to feel comfortable with you and your person and your team before they even will want to see anything else. So that said, your skill set doesn't need to be in public speaking. So long as you're compelling, so long as you're delivering your message and your product such that they see they see the product and the numbers and the projections for what they are and not so much the fact that you're nervous. I mean, everybody wants to, I'm nervous right now, right? So everybody walks into any form of public speaking nervous. And that's, that's anticipated, expected. So you just need to stay focused on why you're there and make sure that you cover um, the, the, what you're there for. And yes, and all the requirements, the product, the market, the financials, the risk, the team. So, so no, don't worry about okay. it. Sweat a little. It's, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so here comes one. Um, can you share some examples of when debt would be more interesting to investors than equity uh, and vice versa? So when would mm -hmm. debt be more interesting to investors than equity? Yeah, debt is not always interesting to the investor for several reasons because, you know, they usually end up doing it at a discounted um, discounted value. Um, and so what if you you skyrocket? What if your, your project just goes through the ceiling and the investor has agreed to a discounted valuation on the onset? Okay. Um, so the investor is not – it's not the preferable mode, although not to say they won't do it. They will absolutely do it because the, um, the due diligence that goes into it is far less 
um, cumbersome um, than um, than equity financing. As far as the business owner, it is the preferable mode because it requires less wrangling and less um, niggles and and forfeiting uh, more of um, the stake in the company and the equity. So. Okay. Thank you. Um, mm-hmm. And then sort of on that equity thing, um, someone's asking, how do I protect myself and my business when offering an dequ- equity round while still offering a good deal to potential investors? I'm not sure I understand the question. So I, I, basically, how do I protect myself and my business uh, during uh-huh. an equity round while offering uh, a good deal to potential investors? Oh, sure. So, yeah. Sure. Well, um, again, how much do you believe in your own product and its potential? And and how much are you willing to to give up? I mean, if you feel you're in a vice and you just can't forge ahead without giving up a big hunk of your company, that's already not a good place to be. So you have to believe in your in your deliverables and how you're able to protect your own interests. Um, without selling your soul. And so this happens actually a lot because, you know, because the strong suits for the restaurant tour is not, is not funding. And they often fund, they don't even comprehend how to run the business side of it. So, you know, it's a balancing act. That's why your team is important. You know, your team is important so that you have plenty of advisors who um, can offer you um, the financial perspective, the legal perspective, um, the business perspective. So it just it really depends. It depends on 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 the situation. I mean, that's not an apply to all um, answer or question, frankly. You know, but you just you have to. If you believe in your product, you have to negotiate. That's it. Right. Okay, thank you. Um, just bring up the screen a little bit. Um, okay, I see another question come through. Uh, in your experience, do most investors want a majority of the equity? Okay, we just kind of talked about this. Uh, no, no, not necessarily. You know, it really depends on the terms, the terms of the deal. So, you know, if in the end they end up, you know, they don't may necessarily may want a controlling uh, portion of the of the business. Um, there may be just silent investors who are happy to collect on the agreed upon. You know, it's all a case by case. So, so no, I don't think that that's necessarily the case. You know, they've got they're investors in multiple businesses. So the intent isn't here to come and take over yours. They're just the the intent is to help you launch and succeed. And by virtue of your success, they succeed in that investment. Excellent. Thank you. Um, and then I see a question here about the investment pitch deck. Um, we mm-hmm. talked about the content. Um, how long should something like this be? No, okay. Great question. Short. <laughs> it should be short, okay? Your pitch deck is, first of all, you create your project plan whatever that is. It's like a business plan. You have to go in with a business plan that you initially maybe even never wrote for yourself, even it's in your heart and in your head. Okay, but um, you basically demonstrate the things we touched on. I'm happy to review. You You do your team. The team is the first and foremost because without the team, you have nothing, frankly. So the team... Your executive summary describing, you know, who and what and how. The problem. Um, the solution. The market you're going into. The financials. Your distribution channel. Your competition. And and any associated risk. So that's your pitch deck. Okay. You're right. Nice and short and to the point. That's good. Yes. Yeah. 
Um, okay, so I think we've come to uh, the end of our program today. Uh, okay. I want to thank Sherry for, for coming, answering uh, questions, for, you know, providing really an excellent presentation, uh, and thank speaking you. from personal experience. I, I think we all really like that. That was, that was really tremendous. Um, I'd like to invite everyone uh, to join us on June 26th for our next webinar with Noah Alper, who uh, is the founder of Noah's Bagels. Uh, Noah will be talking about from startup to IPO, uh, his personal journey, uh, and I think that will be uh, beneficial for everybody. Um, and also at the end of this call, we'll be sending everyone a, a thank you note and a quick survey. Uh, if you could fill that out, that helps us do better next time. So really appreciate it. Uh, thank you again, Sherry, and uh, have, I hope everyone has a wonderful extended Memorial Day weekend. Yes, Bye, my everybody. pleasure. Thank you for chiming in. Thank you. Good night. Bye-bye.